G'day VC, Uncle Rodis here again with another video of records. Now it's been a little while, things have slowed down quite a bit on the record collecting. Um, yeah, slowed down a little bit, not a lot. Um, as we as we close out the year of 2016, um, it's been pretty much a monumental year for me for collecting um, records. Um, it's only my second year with a turntable since rebuying a turntable after not having one for probably 17 or 18 years and um, picking one up in the second half of last year and pretty much going ape shit on buying a lot of records this year and late last year um, so many of which have been shown on video um, so I was yeah not supposed to be buying too much right now but a few things have cropped up and a few um, unscheduled trips to the record shop in town so anyway let's get into it recently as in last week last weekend it was my birthday and I didn't actually get any records this year for my birthday per se but we had a party um, it was my 50th birthday this year um, and I haven't had a party for my birthday since I turned 40 so it was time for another one um, and I got some vouchers given me from some of the guests that came to the party so that was really cool it was quite unexpected and i um, really happy about that so the first voucher was given to me by an old school friend who came to the party and he uh, through one of the local online um, sellers in New Zealand here and I it's not one I not as an online seller I've used a lot of and so I wasn't sure what they had but there was a record that had come out pretty much in the last couple of months that I was interested in getting my hands on and um, I had suggested it to my wife that that would be a nice birthday or Christmas present but unfortunately her bank account hasn't got a lot of funds on it she only had some cash which I mean, online say online purchases weren't going to be an option for her this year so um, the voucher that I got given for this site um, I was looking through their site and lo and behold came across the, the, for the um, album in question and so purchased it and it has duly arrived just today and this is it Punk 45 the latest the latest volume of the Punk 45 series from Soul Jazz Records, um, Les Punk's The French Connection. So I've had a listen to this today. Um, there's the gatefold sleeve there, and there's also some copious notes on the inner sleeves there. Um, double LP, like the rest of them. This is like about the sixth release in the series. Um, mostly been an American although I think there was some English stuff in one of the compilations um, so yeah pretty cool this is interesting yeah the French punk is it is a little bit different there is some very slight tinges of disco mixed in the mix and some other little pieces going on so it is a little bit more interesting and a little bit different then uh, yesterday I had to go into town for an appointment late in the afternoon to uh, for some medical stuff and I had found out recently that the JB Hi-Fi shops um, have a new shop opened in Christchurch now they're, a, they're an Australian based chain of shops I'm pretty sure they're Australian I know that, that my first time I'd ever seen one of those shops was in Australia when I was over there many many years ago um, I had a look at the one in Auckland back in about 2009 when I was up there for a concert and um, before the vinyl revival so they didn't actually have very much vinyl that I recall although I probably wasn't looking at that stage um, I do remember that it was a big shop with a hell of a lot of product and which sometimes can be quite daunting to actually try and find anything I do remember looking, I did buy some Sunra CDs while I was up there, um, I was pretty disappointed with their selection to be honest, I mean someone had said they wanted the biggest record shops in, in Auckland but I mean 
Yeah, they, uh, they, they sort of cater fairly commercial, um, mainstream really, but there is some different stuff to be found. So, yeah, I went to the one at the Westfields Mall. It took me a wee while to find it. Turns up it's actually upstairs. And sure enough, yeah, they're, they're a big, sh- big shops and, and absolutely jammed to the gunnels with product. Um, and, and they don't just specialise in music. I mean, they sell, you know, hi fi. You know, cheap Wi-Fi gear, computers, other appliances, you know, lots of electrical products, basically, um, and DVDs, movies, um, and CDs. So yeah, they did have a fairly large selection of vinyl. Um, I wasn't overly impressed. It was all pretty commercial, mainstream, but it was certainly a much better selection than at the warehouse. Um, a lot of reissues of, of fairly modern stuff. Um, you know, lots of stuff like Beck and um, anyway I was looking particularly I was sort of thinking that they were more likely going to have some of the Sonic Youth reissues that would make sense to me that they would have those because the local record shop here hadn't been getting those in um, although there had been some at the Wii Galaxy shop a couple in there I did, which I bought one off then the rest of them I've been buying online and sure enough they did have some Sonic Youth so I picked up three of the reasonably recent reissues um, while I was there, so that was cool. Um, probably paid a little bit more for them than I would have if I'd perhaps got them online, depending on where I bought them from. But um, you know, you take the mail, cost of mailing. Um, rather ripped. I actually have a copy on CD. Uh, good, good album. Really enjoyed it. Um, and also picked up. Sonic Nurse. So I think these are the latest ones that have been reissued. Um, I think about the only one I haven't got is Jet Set. What's it called? Jet Set something or other trash. Experimental trash. Um, and I haven't got their second album, which I think has been reissued too, which was Confusion and Sex. But I've pretty much got all the rest of them and then there's a few of the main albums I think some of the later ones there's still a few more to come but um, I'm happy that I got these ones these are the ones that I'm looking for the most and Murray Street is the last one I picked up yesterday now Murray Street and Sonic Nerf are, Sonic Nerf are two albums that I have actually not yet listened to I mean as in I've never heard them um, I uh, <clears throat> I was a big Sonic U fan up until kind of the mid 90s I suppose after Goo and Dirty I probably lost interest or, or stopped buying their music for whatever reason just was you know playing around with other stuff but um, so kind of catching up a bit on that stuff after oh, and, and yeah and still at JB High Fives and playing in the background if you can hear it um their New Zealand collection was very, very small. There was probably not more than half a dozen to a to a dozen records that I spotted that were New Zealand records, which was really quite poor in some way. But interesting thing was is that the New Zealand records I did have were right in a very interesting mix, and I had several of them already, so there wasn't much for me to pick up. But I did find this one. Um, this band's been around for many, many years, although I'm not hugely familiar with their music. This is their sec- a second album that I have purchased of theirs. This is fairly much their latest album. Uh, one, two, three, and four, which is pretty much the names of the songs on the record. It's a double LP. The band is The Dead Sea, and they are. And the album is called Trouble. And I think it was from last year. I'm not sure if they've released anything else since then. Um, they have a pretty big discography. They've been around, as I say, probably 30 years now. Um, yeah, pretty much an experimental noise, very lo-fi um, band. It was interesting, actually. Um, I put the next record I'm going to show you on after I'd been listening to their record and how the contrast and the quality of the recordings was quite outstanding. Um, I'm going from probably some of the lowest quality recording wise you know full on lo-fi distorted experimental stuff to some of the best recordings in world in the world um, <laughs> so there was definitely a big contrast so 
that, that in question is this one here, an ECM record, Jan Garbarek and Bobo Stenson um, from 1975, ECM 1075, Dan Seri is the album. This is really, really good. Um, I picked this up for like 10 bucks, so I'm, I'm impressed with the price. It was um, it, all the, 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 the cling plastic cling wrap that the Germans put on their early album was all flaking so I've actually pulled it off I don't like it I've actually been ripping it off if I can some of it's still stuck to the front but that was part of the reason probably why they had it priced so low the cover itself is all in one piece and there's no major rips or tears and the record when I looked at it after cleaning I could see there was a fair bit of surface light surface scratching but to be honest it really didn't come through very much at all so it sounds it sounds superb and it is a pretty good um, album and I do like Bobo Stenson's early stuff and John Garbarek's early stuff so that was a that was a nice little score um, just to finish off the day there um, and then also um, last week arrived this album here The Features this is a compilation album by The Features that's the name of the band they are a punky post-punky band from Auckland in the early 80s and this is pretty much everything they recorded. Um, I was familiar with a couple of their songs, and I was also familiar with some of the bands that they were in before the features. Um, this is fresh off the fresh off the press, pretty much last month. Um, this was sent to me as a Secret Santa gift, um, and that was a really, really good choice. I, I it was on my on my uh, want list, to, so to speak. You know, I was on my. I may pick that up if I get the chance or if I see it around or whatever. I wasn't going to go, I wasn't too in a big way going, I need to have that. But actually I probably should have done because this is very, very good and it's, um, it's had a lot of airplay in the last week on my turntable, so it's been pretty cool. Um, and then last week... Oh, also, yeah, so, okay, yeah. On, at my birthday party I was also given some vouchers for the local record shop in Christchurch, the one and only Penny Lane, and so on the Monday I had another appointment to go to, you know, I've got some medical issues happening and I've got some regular appointments in town which is a real pain in the ass because it's quite a lot of travel and time and, and not working, so it's costing me a lot of money. but. Anyway, so I popped into Penny Lane after the appointment and had a flick through because they had been a little tweet, not a tweet, but a, a, a list, been a comment on Facebook that they had quite a lot of new stock gone out just a couple of days earlier or over the weekend. And so I was going to get down there and have a look through that. And yeah, I actually did reasonably well. Um, so we picked up another ECM. This is Gary Peacock, Tales of Another with Keith Jarrett and Dak Dijonette. So um, Gary Peacock has um, written all of the music for this and this is ECM 1101 and it's from 1977. I've had a, I've only actually listened to one side of this because I've been busy with other stuff but Keith Jarrett has a bit of a reputation for groaning and you know he gets really into his music and he's playing away and, and he's, he's improvising a lot and there's quite a lot of that going on on this record I think and as he's improvising he's even surprising himself about what he's playing and he and he vocalises his his surprise and groans and, and hoops and carries on and I I know some people get really uh, annoyed and pissed off a bit about it and it hasn't bothered me too much in the past but this record he's actually very yeah there's actually a lot of that going on more more than I have heard before um, and of course he wasn't mic'd or anything so it doesn't come through very clear so you've got this stellar stunning musically well recorded album with this kind of really badly recorded vocalisation happening in the background which is a little bit distracting but overall it's not too bad um, and it was actually, no, yeah, I say it wasn't that well priced. This one here was a little bit cheaper, and this one here is a much, much better record. Sam Rivers Contrast. So this is ECM 1162. 
So this is from 1980, so this is a couple of three years later. Um, Sam is playing with George Lewis, Dave Holland, and Thurman Barker is another guy I'm not, who I'm not familiar with. Yeah, I, I think someone else has flashed this record around. But anyway, being an ECM, I didn't really know um, who he was, but being an ECM, I was going to grab it anyway because it certainly looks interesting. This is fantastic. This is... It's... it's Pretty much a more of a free, free, free playing a record or free jazzy type sounding record. Um, very well, ha, I, I was gonna say I've used the word very well structured. I mean, it could be more structured than I realise, but it's got that sound to it. But it is, it's really, really good. Um, yeah, all the compositions are credited to Sam Rivers. Yeah, very impressed with this. This is a good score. Really pleased to have it. Um, then I, and finally on that little haul, which you know exhausted the allocation of the vouchers that I had. Well, actually, I went a wee bit overboard. I did, as I, you know, I spent a little bit of extra money to pick these up from what the vouchers were. But this one here, don't see very, very much Braxton at all around in, in our local shops, and um, I'm not wasn't familiar with it. So, I, but I grabbed it. It was actually not too badly priced. Not the price that's on there. That's an old price. From another shop, but um, I this is a 1974 album in the tradition. There were two volumes that was recorded in Sweden, Copenhagen in 1974, and something about that this was supposed to be a session with who was it? Dexter Gordon, but Dexter couldn't make it, and Anthony filled in. So. I like this, this is a nice record, uh, it, it's not that highly regarded on the review that I saw, I only got like one and a half stars and the guy was complaining about um, Braxton playing all over the show and not really blending with the with the rest of the guys but I, um, I've only listened to it once but I didn't feel that about it, I did, there was some really really nice piano playing I thought from uh, Titi Montalou. Um yeah, there was, and, and he's quite um, prominent on some of the tracks that I've heard. The the songs are all cover um, uh, standard songs. Like there's Mingus, um, Billy Strayhorn, Lush Life, and some other tracks. So I'm not quite sure who the writers are. So, but um, no, good to see that because. We do not see much Braxton around, and he's got a pretty big discography, but I'm not hugely familiar with his music. Um, earlier on, again, I'd had been, again, like I say, I've been going into town for these medical appointments and in the, in the kind of mid-afternoon, and, and then occasionally, if I get the chance, I'll shoot into the record shop and... Um, the other week I'd had a really, really stressful day and after the medical examination I decided to just go and, and try some out some retail therapy. <laughs> and, and so I uh, picked up these two records. So I've, <laughs> the, um, so I've been pretty lucky on the ECMs um, in the last two or three trips. So, enough, so I grabbed this one, found this one, um, ECM 1154, so it's not... Far, it's slightly um, earlier than the Sam Rivers ones. Old and New Dreams with Don Cherry, Dewey Redman, and Charlie Hayden, and a guy called Ed Blackwell. Um, so I knew most of those guys. It's a pretty stellar lineup. Uh, the tracks that uh, there's an Ornette Coleman track that opens the album, and then then there's two tracks, one by Ed Blackwell, one by Don Cherry, to finish outside one. And then again, side two opens with another Ornette Coleman track, um, open or close, and then the other two tracks are written by the rest of the band. So we've got Dewey Redmond doing one track, and uh, writ, writ, had written one track, and Charlie Hayden had written the last track. So each each musician has contributed one uh, one composition, and then two Ornette Coleman tracks. This is pretty cool. This is a nice record. I quite enjoyed it too. Um, and yeah. Quality wise, it's, it's cleaned up quite nicely. This one is a German pressing, so that was a German pressing. Actually, they were all German pressings except I think the Sam Rivers, which was the US pressing. 
We tend to seem to get more of the US out of German pressings here in New Zealand for some reason, which is fine with me because I think they're the best, the best pressings anyway. Um, and then on that same trip that I picked up that, I picked up this one here, and this is a local jazz record uh, on Ode. So this is manufactured and distributed in New Zealand and recorded here in New Zealand. Um, Africa Aurora Aro, Araha, 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 and um, the band is called oh, Super Brew. Super Brew is the name of that. This is really good. This is quite funky jazz. It's from 1987. Um, so the guys that are playing on it have been overseas and doing all sorts of stuff, and then. Um, the main guy kind of came back to New Zealand and got this stuff together now. What's his name? Not sure. No, don't recognise the names of any of the players on here to be honest. But the, the songs are people by like um, Abdullah Ibrahim um, is in Dollar Brand. is the first track. Um, there's a Mike Knock track on here which is really cool because I love Mike Knock. He's really great. Um, Paul McCandless track. Um, there's a John Coltrane, Afro Blue on side two, and then the other two tracks are by the actual guys in the band. So there's a bit of original stuff and a bit of other stuff, but overall it's a very good record and I'm really, really impressed. And good score. I mean, I I do snap up any New Zealand jazz that I see um, in, the, in the bins if I've got some money to afford it. I mean, and they, I mean this was $30, so usually you know that if they've got like 30 bucks on it it's probably a pretty good one and slightly rarer um, not on Discog so I'm going to have to um, sort that out at some stage but good score I'm really pleased and then before that I was in the warehouse which is you know a really shitty place to buy records to be honest but every now and again something crops up of interest I was, I was just kind of browsing, just to make sure. Every time I go into town, I usually go and have a browse through the warehouse, just in case. I had bought a few records there, just in case something interesting turns up. And this was there, and I was looking, and it was a really good price. This is a double album on Festival Records. So Festival is an Australian, New Zealand kind of label. Um, been around for many years. And I was looking at it, so what is it? Silver Roads, Australian country rock and singer-songwriters of the 70s. And I was looking at the track listing on it, and I was sort of like, side one, never heard of any of these guys, you know, um, country radio, the Flying Circus, and Kip Kirkpatrick, Richard Clapton. Uh, and interesting though, there was there was a track here by Fothering, Fotheringay, Fotheringay, which was an English band, but there was some Australian guy tied up with that. Got down into the other tracks, never heard of them except for a band called Daddy Cool, who had a big hit called Eagle Rock back in the early 70s but then we got to side 3 and I'm reading Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs um, Fraternity featuring one man called Bon Scott and a band called Chains three of those bands I was familiar with not as country rock more as progressive hard rocking blues rocking whatever but um, so yeah and it, so it turned out there's some really interesting music on this um, good. It was a good score. I mean, I paid sixteen bucks for it, brand new. You know, um, so not a bad, um, bad effort. It, it's. I mean, there's nothing outstanding on it, but um, yeah, something quite interesting. And then, finally, last one. Uh, I've had this for several weeks. Um, I saw this on on a site called Flying Out, which is in Auckland shop that does a lot of mail order stuff on their website and I've bought quite a lot of my I've bought quite a few New Zealand releases through them and they're basically the main outlet for Flying Nun Records in New Zealand um, online so if you go through the Flying Nun website they redirect you to Flying Out um, website for buying their uh, releases and this turned up on their website and something rang a bell about it the name of the band rang a bell and I, I mean I don't really know what they were who they were but it looked like something about it rang a bell with me and then I realised it was a it was a band I'd heard on a podcast that I listened to and I'd been listening to this podcast um, playlist and, and this band was on that in the first track um, I think of their second album called Tumblers to the Vault 
which is actually the name of the record. So this is a three album box or three album set. Now these are a Canadian band from the very early 70s. Um, S S Srinix? Shri yes, Srinix or something like that. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Um, and they put out two albums. The first one self-titled, the second one called Long Lost Relatives. And then the third album they've got here is a live um, concert called Long Lost Relics, which I don't think was ever released. So it's pretty much everything they've done, um, three albums set. Yeah, this is good. It's kind of electronic -y, weird, offbeat. It's kind of a little bit different, um, a little bit droney, um, especially the first album. I think the second album I like a lot better. Um, the live one's quite cool. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the guy, John Mills Cock Cockell, who was the, the leader, which I think is the guy in the middle there. So yeah, that was pretty cool. And that I think is pretty much my final um, bunch of records for the year. I do know that I am getting one record at least for Christmas Day, or I did ask for one that I saw down the warehouse. It was a Blue Note by Sonny Rollins that I didn't have because um, I haven't picked up many more of the Blue Notes for a while. Um, I kind of picked up all the really cheap ones that were going on Fish Pond for 25 bucks each, which was really cool. Um, but then the dollar went a bit haywire against the American dollar, so that changed the price of stuff a bit. So. Um, not sure where they're at at the moment with that, but I'd like to get some more. Anyway, so um, that's my my lot for the for the year, and unfortunately, I've had such a majorly majorly big year of record buying that I really need to um, kind of tighten the belt up a bit next year and start paying off all the money that I borrowed to do the house up. So, um, apart from well, there will still be some records, but there won't be anything like it this year. Um, my spare cash will be going to pay the bank. So I hope you're having a good Christmas. Um, have a have a nice Christmas and happy New Year. And uh, we will see you again soon, Monday.